Every artist gets in this game to do three things, but those three things just so happen to be the very three things that you need to enter the game, master it, and then exit, I'm not gonna say unscathed, but with what you plan to do with the game. Now, if you come in just saying that, hey, I wanna be famous and I wanna get some money without real reason as to why you're doing this, then entering the game, mastering it, and exiting the game in a decent fashion is not really gonna happen. So what we're gonna do in today's video is we're gonna break down these three steps in which I've seen over the past 20 years that I've had in the game and currently working with artists in record deals right now. And I'm gonna explain that to you right here on the Music Money Makeover Show. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Music Money Makeover Show. I got three ways that we gotta explain how you're gonna enter the game, master it, and exit it. Breaking public consciousness, releasing three critically acclaimed albums on whatever level, right? And finally gaining complete autonomy over your career. The last one is the hardest one. That's like the Bowser stage, but you gotta get there so that you can exit. You get what I'm saying? Now, let's hop into the slides. Okay, so our first step that we gotta do is we gotta break public consciousness. Breaking public consciousness in short, means becoming a household name. Now, this can be done on many levels. You don't, you don't have to be a superstar. See, it all depends on how high you want to go. You can be a local legend in your city, a staple artist of a region, a household name nationally or worldwide, or you can be one of these you know, new digital artists in a niche. Just because you're not a superstar on a global scale doesn't mean you didn't have a successful music career. So breaking the public public consciousness on TikTok is great. The thing is, there's some people who are not on TikTok. And there are some TikTok stars who are strictly just on TikTok. And, and they're there. Like you, People come to watch you on TikTok. You're a digital artist in a niche, right? Great, right? Some of you all are just strictly on Instagram. Some of you all are online and you're actually doing the work of becoming a superstar, meaning that you're in the streets. So you're jumping back and forth doing both. All right. Now, if you're a household name nationally or worldwide, you probably aren't watching this channel. But I'm just speaking to my viewers who are watching this video, I'm just letting you know to break public consciousness has to be done in sections and sectors. It doesn't happen all at once. It doesn't, you know blow up and go national all the time or global all the time, meaning going viral. But if it does, great to you. The point is we got to break the public consciousness. This is our first step because if we cannot get this happening, that means there's something wrong with what we're doing. Content, music, product, quality, whatever it is, it's just not getting through to the people. Maybe this is not what you're supposed to be doing. Okay. Now, once we understand what we're doing at the first step, then we can go into the second step, which is this. We got to release three acclaimed albums. Okay. Now, everything in the first step back here, I'm going to explain to you with, you know, four different artists. I'm going to show that to you in a second. But this is our first step. This is all happening in the very beginning. This is our first goal. We're doing that. But we got to release three acclaimed albums if what we're going to do is ride a wave, the wave that we created when we broke public consciousness. Now, the goal is to release three albums that are classics back to back. Some people can do it in three or for some five like Outkast. Now, three albums will usually do the trick. Master P explained this well in his BET uh, docu-series, right? It's, you know, he jumped off of Say Uh and went to basketball because he knew you were only going to get three three really good shots at this thing. Once you reach the peak of your wave, you're either going to ride it down, it's going to be a rough ride down, a smooth ride down, but whatever it is, you got to know when you hit the peak. Once you hit the peak, you got to hop off, right? So that you can funnel your money into other endeavors and opportunities and you can switch the attention to something else. So that's why I'm saying three acclaimed albums. These select three albums always happen after you've had a mix of one to two or one to three test projects, singles or EPs working in the streets. Once once you have the test projects happen, that should be utilized to break this. Okay, and I'm going to explain to you, just hold on. Now, after your proof of concept stage is over, there will be a point when you say to yourself, let's do this for real. And that usually happens after you broke the consciousness of the public. All right, now once you say, let's do this for real, the public is more than likely ready for it. They're primed for it. 
Once you reach that point, it will be marked as your first album by labels or the public. So all the while back here, while you're building this, this is happening too. You're building your record label as well with the 60 day record label. Now, let's go to the next slide. I'm going to give you some examples. Y'all can put your gripes in the comment section about who was what and what happened where. I don't care. I'm just giving you a rough example of how all this is going to unfold with these four artists. Now, 50 Cent, I'm using him because I'm just using him. He came across my timeline today. I was like, cool, I'll talk about 50. So he drops Guess Who's Back, okay? Guess Who's Back comes out. He talks about a lot of different, he goes at a lot of different people on the records he has on there, okay? He goes, he signs to Columbia Records. There's an unreleased album that happens. But between that and this, right, this is what he had. He had to use this and all the energy of this to break public consciousness to get the streets buzzing. And then he had his initial album. That initial album usually sets the wave off at a massive scale. For him, it did. All right. Some people, it doesn't. I'm going to explain it in the next example. But for him and for many others, it's usually the first album that sets things off in a massive way for you. All right. That first album came out. It sold the most. Of course, you see I'm missing uh, Get Rich or Die Trying to soundtrack. That came out between here and here. But I just wanted to use the actual studio albums for that. All right. So now this one is out. The wave is high. He's riding it. The next one comes out. But what I noticed on the back end, which is what, what I already knew, was that the sales were dwindling down. Right. Now, 50 Cent, the brand had been built. I mean, you, you can't get away from that. 50 Cent, the brand had been built and he started building something else because he prepared for his exit and he was very smart. Instead of putting 50 Cent as the logo on the third album, you see how it was 50 Cent, 50 Cent, 50 Cent? He changed it to Curtis because at this point he started to get into television and film. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you, the last step is exiting. I'm going to show you what we got to do with that. He exited with this. Curtis, Curtis Jackson, he used Curtis to sway that corporate image into play. As the music image started to die and dwindle, sales started to dwindle down. Everybody was going digital at that point anyway, right? So that was his exit. And he had another rise. He had another rise that he was building. He was working on lower budget films. He had, of course, Get Rich or Die Trying, which was a big film. But he started building that film bug. You know what I mean? That went up. And so he had to switch his name. You get what I'm saying? Now, Outcast. Here we go. What about your friends remix? This is where they started, 1992, right? This came out in 92. This was the proving grounds right here. They were rapping on here. You get what I'm saying? When they did that, this said, this made, you know, the public say, "Oh, who who are these guys? Oh, this is pretty cool. All right, this is, this is interesting. I like this. This is this is good." You know what I mean? And then they came out with Players Ball. Right? Players Ball comes out 93. This goes, this leaves you from 93 into 94, right? It, it appeared on the LaFace Christmas album, but they had to make a different version so that it would last longer than Christmas, and it became their first single. And that led to Southern Playlist of Cadillac Music. I don't have to go through the order. You know how the order went. The difference in this is this is how they broke public, public consciousness. They jumped over this line of consciousness, and their wave, instead of having an initial bang, it was a bang for the South, but it kept rising. And rising. It just kept going and going and going because when they went to AT Aliens, to Equimini, to Stankonia, you can you see, you see how big it got. It was a long run. But ultimately, the peak of the wave was Speaker Box Love Below. You see what I'm saying? And so it worked out that way for them. Doesn't always work out that way for many, but you'll see on the next example where the three comes back into play again. This line of consciousness is very important here. Right, because this is the public consciousness. Kendrick Lamar, section eighty, section eighty was the point at which he broke the line of consciousness. Now, I never heard this EP. I don't only heard this one when he was coming out. Overly dedicated, all right. But the Kendrick Lamar EP comes out, then overly dedicated comes out, then section eighty comes out, breaks the line of consciousness, and then boom, Good Kid, Mad City happens. The wave is on. This had. I'm going to say both of these had the same type of impact, but not as much as Good Kid, Mad City. You know what I mean? So Bimper Butterfly kind of came down just a hair. So they were like this. You know what I mean? Because this one was this one dug into the culture a lot harder than this one did. But they were both, all of these were great albums. 
You know what I mean? But we all know that out of the 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 social commentary of this one and the storytelling of this one, when we got to damn the the story wasn't as strong as these were. You know what I mean? The movie, if you will, wasn't as strong as these were. And so his wave begins to begins to decline after the third album. The rule of three. You're going to at least get three after you break the public consciousness. You're going to at least get three. You know what I mean? Some of y'all only get one and then you crash and burn. We know those. But in most cases, if you ride it right, you're going to get three. It doesn't matter the level. Okay? I'll show you the rule of three in the next one. Anita Baker. I love her. I love deep voice singers. They're my favorite, especially deep voice female singers. She got her start with chapter eight as the lead singer. Then she broke the public consciousness, consciousness, signed a deal. And then the songstress comes out. All right. And then we know what happens with the rapture. Right. And then she has the live show in D.C., I believe. You know, they film it and all that stuff. This one was big. And then this one comes out, giving you the best that I got. The, and after that, it kind of was over with. She released another collection of songs, but it was pretty much over with. And I don't have my girl Tony Braxton in here, but there, there's the same thing, right? She has the original album, Tony Braxton. She has Tony. Uh, she has the Secrets album, and then she has uh, what, what was it? What was the third album? Uh, the Heat. She had the Heat after Secrets. Now after that, it was pretty much done for Tony. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm just comparing those three right here. Tony kind of followed the same footsteps as Anita. So that's why you can lay them there. The rule of three is real. Okay. So with that being said, now that you understand that, we have to prepare for the exit. All right. Release three acclaimed albums back to back. And you're clear for an exit if you choose. If it takes longer like Outkast, you have to look for it to see that it's going to take longer. All right. You have to be willing to change and grow to make that happen. OK, but a claim means this one. The streets deem it a classic like the movie Baby Boy, which never won any awards, but it will always be a classic amongst the culture. Now, if the culture deems what you do a classic, you won. All right. It's OK if you didn't go higher than that. You still won. Two. You may get some lower tiered awards in addition to the streets like a BT award or a Soul Train award or some local award like a Southern Entertainment award or a Core DJ award or something like that. If you get that and that was like the highest award you got in addition to the streets, we you still won. But then if you get those, the streets, the local awards, and then you get a golden platinum plaque, you still won. But if you get the Grammy or at least a Grammy nomination, you won. You don't have to go as high as the Grammy to win you just have to break the public consciousness ride it with three albums and then you got to exit like this gaining autonomy over your career if during the wave of one of these three albums you lose autonomy you're going to lose the exit and the exit is going to be a hard one because you're going to come out with nothing you get what i'm saying your goal is to complete and fulfill every option to exploit every lifestyle interest associated with you and your music if you let someone design a lifestyle for you, this is why I'm using this TLC image right here. This is a pivotal moment in music. If you let someone design the lifestyle that you are portraying as you're acting and you're communicating your story to the public through the music, then the exit is going to be horrible. You know what I'm saying? It's not going to be a fun ride because in the end, this game is all about how well you play it. Having complete governance over your music and career is totally possible. It's totally possible. But it all depends on what you do while you're riding away, what you sign, how you come in, what you speak and what you say over the music. All right? Now, oh, lost my key here. Now, four things to exit with. Cash, copyright assets, trademark assets, and connections to invest your cash once you get out. The connections that you build while you're in the industry is going to allow you to do something on the side. So while you were working your job, your job was your side hustle to your music so it could fuel the music that you were doing. When you get in, start prepping the side hustle so that the side hustle will be your, your cushion when the wave starts to come down. So you can create another wave up. You know what I mean? So when you go up, prep the side hustle as you're going up. 
When it comes down, the side hustle is ready to go up again. And that's how you're going to ride the wave. You see what I'm saying? In your life, you should be able to get two good waves out of the thing. If you're doing it right. You know what I mean? I know the game is crazy. I know all these people I showed you signed deals. But it don't have to be like that, especially in now in today's day and age. It all depends on what you want to do. It all depends on who you put around you. But the one thing you got to do is you have to build the label the right way. I'll talk about that in a minute. You see, what did you enter the game for? You entered the game to leverage attention. Don't lose sight of this. This is why you came into the game was to play it and to leverage the attention. Now, purchase the 60 day record label course below. Why are you doing this? Because if we go back in the beginning, this is the time. This this point right here, this is what you're using the 60 day record label for. All before you hit the line of public consciousness. When you hit this line of public consciousness, trying to build out your company processes will be a headache. It will be a severe headache because it's like, yo, I got so much going on and you want to make sure that all this stuff is done right. Use the 60 day record label and build the label at this point. Not when you get over here, when you get over here, you better have had it done. But at the way, at the rate at things, the way things go viral in today's day and age, Sometimes it's hard to say some stuff might take off faster than you can get it built. But if you know how to build it, then you can do this. Have autonomy over your career because you have autonomy over the company that you built. You get what I'm saying? Because you know what you got in the game for how you're going to exit. And you didn't lose sight of the fact that you were going to leverage attention to get out of the game and get something from it. All right. Now, download the 60-day record label if you can't get into the course. The course is affordable. It's, it's not highly expensive. $275 and you're out the door or five payments of $55, I say it's pretty solid. All right? Book a call with me and we'll develop your strategy um, because you're going to need one after you build the label. Trust me, you will. All right? So there you have it. Three ways to enter the game, master it, and exit the game. Very simple. I told you it was going to sound simple, but it's not in essence, when you do all the work. Now, hopefully you can have a clear vision of why you're using the 60 day record label to build the stuff in the beginning. Because as you can see, as the stuff starts to move along, you're not really gonna have a lot of time to do it. So music money makers, if you make music, you should always make money. Download the 60 day record label, hop into the course, start building this thing, and I'll see you next time. Peace.